great to see such a big group here. Um, it's been a while since Cern Wilkins has hosted an event, um, but uh, glad you guys can, uh, can make it out here. Um, so just two quick things. Um, Safety-wise, uh, exits are down this way or down the hallway over there if we do have any emergencies. Um, if you need restroom facilities, use the restrooms here, not our display toilets in the back. <laughs> um, and uh, as I mentioned before, there's uh, beverages on the fridge. Uh, we also have some, uh, some light food over here on the side. Uh, we'll do quick um, PowerPoint, just kind of an intro into visual daily management, and then get into uh, factory tour, and then come back up and finish up the, the presentation. Uh, so you can grab some food on the way back in as well. Um, and then uh, the rest of the agenda as it went out. Um, so, without further ado, uh, what is or what is Rex Nord uh, and Zern Wilkins? A little history about us. Uh, Zern Wilkins is a uh, division of Rex Nord. You can go to rexnord.com, check out all of our uh, cool products. Um, we're in two platforms: process, motion control, and then water management. And Zern Wilkins is a piece of the water management group. Um, more detailed history on Zern Wilkins, very brief history, as I know we got a lot of questions as to what's, uh, or a lot of uh, questions on, on the floor and our difficult processes and everything, but Zern Wilkins uh, started in Southern California in 1906, uh, grew slowly but surely down there. Um, Zern purchased uh, the Wilkins company in 1971, uh, moved to Paso Robles in 77. And uh, then Zern was acquired by Rexnord in 2007. Uh, a lot of stuff in between there, so again, high level history. But uh, we started our lean training four months after Rexnord acquired Zern. Um, a lot of the uh, lean trainings, the, the Rexnord business system is modeled off of the Danaher business system, which is uh, another big, uh, big company, big into lean, it's had a lot of success. Um, and it's, you know, the all modeled off of the Toyota production system. <clears throat> so what is uh, visual daily management? Um, basically it's an operating system put in place uh, to vis uh, that in so that anybody can visually see the status of what's going on. Um, the key points there is anyone can walk in and visually understand what's going on. Um, so anyone from the new hire to the visitors like yourselves, um, to visitors from other facilities. Um, basically, you want to try to simplify it so that anybody can understand it. Um, it helps with training new hires, helps with training current associates that want to be cross-trained into other areas. Um, and it quickly, um, quickly identifies the abnormalities. Um, so visually, you want to understand the workplace organization, where everything belongs. Uh, the work process, the flow of material, the flow of information, the flow of uh, communication, etc. Uh, and when there's an abnormality, uh, you want to be able to easily identify that. Uh, and then also if you're ahead, behind, or on schedule. Uh, so there's kind of two pieces to the visual uh, daily management that we'll be looking at. Um, kind of KPI boards or um, status board type things. Uh, KPIs are your key performance indicators, and those are what's important to your company. That'll vary from company to company, um, but all of ours are tied into kind of four things, safety, quality, delivery, and cost, uh, in that order of importance. So first and foremost, we want to be safe in everything that we do. Uh, we don't want to try to get something out quick, hit that delivery deadline, um, and jeopardize our associate of safety. Um, so I always want to make sure we're doing something safe, uh, followed by doing it in a quality manner. Uh, we don't want to ship something that's defective. It'll just come back to us. Uh, won't be beneficial for the customer. Um, and finally, getting the delivery out. If we have to work overtime, do something, uh, expedite air freight in material, increase the cost of it, but we're able to hit our delivery dates. Um, then you know, we'll weigh those factors. Uh, Last but not least, don't tell the finance guys, but uh, cost is last on our list. 
<clears throat> so why daily management, uh, day, visual daily management? Uh, again, to communicate the goals, <clears throat> um, stabilize the process, make sure that you know we, we understand the process, we can change it, uh, but make it visual as to why and how the process is done. Provide a dashboard to monitor your, your status. Um, ensure your compliance to that safety, quality, delivery, and cost. Identify opportunities for improvement. When you see those abnormalities, things aren't going the way as planned, it's very easy to identify what's not going according to plan and uh, start working with, uh, try to, <coughs> excuse me, start working towards uh, improvement. Um, and then, then make sure success of the entire team. Uh, it's not one particular area that needs to succeed, it's the whole company that needs to succeed. And uh, really looking at the goals for the company and how each individual area can, uh, and each individual process can lead to those, to those uh, achievement of the company goals. You don't want the LA traffic jam, you want a nice smooth flow, like the other picture. Um, so, how you use visual daily management. Um, if an uh, abnormality occurs, your visual tool will tell you where you're off, uh, help you discover that abnormality, and the quicker you can discover that abnormality or what's out of whack, uh, the quicker you can fix it. Uh, so you look for your root cause, make your improvement, and standardize that, that uh, improvement. Uh, if there's an abnormality that occurs again, go through the whole process. Eventually, you get fewer and fewer um, problems, things out of whack, and uh, use your, your Kaizen or Engage team to remove those abnormalities and root causes. So visual controls are in our everyday life, um, from street signs to whatever, stoplights, you have that nice visual cue. Uh, both the sequence, red, yellow, green, as well as the color. Um, it's a standard. It's out there. It's easy to, to recognize. You don't have to read a long sentence to say stop or slow down. Um, so from here, we'll break up into groups and uh, go out on the floor, see some of our um, stuff in action. We'll come back and follow up with a few other areas we're not able to, uh, to look at. Um, but be on the lookout for you know any of those visual cues that are out there um, that help you know identify if things are in order, um, if the work is processing the progressing the way it should, if we're ahead or behind. Um, colors are good. Um, you know whatever it is, we'll uh, we'll go out there on the floor and try to identify some examples, show you some some real life examples. Instead of going through a bunch of slides, so Ryan, what, what what's the policy going to be on on photographs or, or things? Uh, like that? You can take uh, as many photos as you want. Um, yeah, we're we're open to share. Okay. So um, on the production floor, uh, you have to have your safety glasses on. So go ahead and grab some safety glasses. Uh, if you do have glasses already, um, we have some oversized glasses that will will fit over those. You brought your own safety glasses. Great. Um, closed toed shoes as well. Um, if you don't have closed toed shoes, uh, be very careful. Stay in the main aisles. Um, we do have a lot of forklift traffic out there. We're going to try to avoid our uh, shipping area right now because uh, we're getting all our late pickups and there's a lot of forklift activity out there. Uh, so the two or three main areas we're going to look at. Our, our daily management war room, our small backflow production area, which is not actually producing anything, um, but has some good visual management. And then uh, our large backflow production area, or production value stream, um, that is actually producing stuff and has some good Wrap us up here on the tour. Yeah, so the tour uh, ran a little long with a lot of good, uh, lot of good questions. Um, a lot of information to cover um, 
on this topic and other topics. So definitely you can set up uh, some tours if somebody wants to come back, uh, bring more people or less people. Whatever you want, uh, we can, uh, we're flexible, we can set up some more uh, idea sharing. So I'll uh, go through uh, some guidelines for good visuals. Um, make sure they're, they're understandable. Um, again, that goes back to anyone can walk on the floor and be able to identify what's going on. Um, consider the audience. Sometimes you have your shop floor, sometimes you have your senior management. Uh, it's hard to make one display to satisfy all audiences. Um, that's something that we're going through right now as we're trying to revamp the boards. Um, but, you know, for our audience on the floor, uh, being in Spanish is important since we have a huge um, Hispanic uh, workforce. Um, so just you know, be aware of the audience. Um, indicate the goal. Know whether you're winning or losing. Um, you know, if you're not keeping score, uh, or if you don't have the goals to, to what <clears throat> is good or bad, you're just kind of recording numbers. Um, should be at a glance, use pictures, colors, red and green, as much as possible um, to indicate the desired results. And then uh, should be standardized over time. I know in my group we talked a lot about there's different, uh, um, different charts, different forms for different value streams. Um, we need to have a little bit of flexibility as each value stream is a little bit different, but um, you want to try to standardize as much as possible so it's easy to understand. You don't have to learn a whole new form for each cell that you go to. Um, for Rexnord, uh, I think we're up to about 45 sites now um, all over the world uh, with their most recent acquisitions. So as we have associates going between different sites to learn. Um, we want to try to make the forms as standard as possible between sites, um, but also within, within the site, try to make it standardized. Um, but leave that flexibility in there so you can have your continuous improvement. Um, just kind of the history, and this, the, the uh, event was kind of titled The Evolution of Visual Daily Management. So I know people are at different stages within their organization from no daily visual management or visual daily management to uh, you know, sophisticated. When we started out in 2007, a little hard to see here. Um, I'll fall asleep. Uh, we just put up some butcher paper and printed off some crude forms. Uh, they can mark Day and night shift was blue for day shift, orange for night shift. We had a simple grid. They just put a mark on the day of the month for day of the yeah day of the month as to where they fell. So keep it simple to record to start off with. Um, as you get used to it, um, you know you may have some things that are off the chart. Those are kind of the big red flags that they go off the grid. But um, it's very visual to see you know where the problems are. We've, We've got some, some uh, instances that are way off the charts. You want to go back and figure out what's going on there. Hopefully they're, they're calling for help at that time um, before they got too far off the charts. But uh, yeah, just keep it simple. You don't need to overcomplicate it. As we went through, uh, we got some cute little fancy forms. Uh, safety with our you know, plus sign, quality delivery cost, red or green. A lot of green here, a little bit of red, a lot of red throughout the rest of it. Um, as we would countermeasure these these uh, these process failures, um, we would always start with safety if there was any issues there. Um, address those first. Move on to quality because that's the next most important. We didn't want to dwell too much on delivery cost issues. Um, Unless it was uh, specific, had a had a, a, uh, a big impact to the business, but you know if we solved the quality issues, we would solve our delivery and cost issues generally. 
make sure that your users have all their appropriate pens and pencils necessary to color in the charts. Um, mentioned the uh, the kiosks. Um, you know, we went from the big boards kind of running out of wall space from time to time. The kiosks worked really well. Different types of forms throughout the uh, throughout the years with these. But, uh, you know, just try something new. It doesn't hurt to try something new. Um, simplified it. We figured out, okay, we had too much wall space with our big big charts here. How do we simplify those four uh, SPDC charts and the one you know, we got to these forms? Um, graphing out our history uh, over the last three months, trying to consolidate and make it as useful as possible. So that was some of our, our cell production, um, the big war room board. This is what it was like in 2009. Really rough, our safety was just, you know, hand scribbled up there. We still had more or less the same charts that we do now. Um, our quality was a little bit different how it was reported out. Um, we had major columns versus the rows across the top. Um, just trying something, getting stuff handwritten up there. Our on-time delivery misses was just put a tick mark up there as to the reason why we missed a delivery that day or the previous day. Um, you can quickly see part shortage was number one, still is number one. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's gotten a lot better. When we first started tracking our on-time delivery, um, well, first we weren't tracking it, and then we were tracking it. That was a big win. Um, we were in the 60% range, uh, shipping product on time to our customers. Very, very bad. Um, once it, be, it became a metric that we were looking at, and we were seeing our, our red and green every day, and being able to countermeasure and get into our quality problems, our part shortage problems. Um, you know, we've brought that up to uh, this month we're at 96%. Uh, percent on time to our customers requested date. So a lot of a lot of big improvements over the years. Um, you get these metrics out there, whatever is important for your business, um, for your customers, then that's what you can track. Here's another shot of our uh, production, you know, just keep it short and sweet, write it up there um, as necessary. You don't have to do a lot of fancy graphs if you don't need to. Here's our war room today. Everybody saw. Um, also, some other visual pieces. You know, hard hat area required. Make some nice pretty pictures that'll catch some attention. People are looking down. Oh yeah, I'll see that. Um, we also have some other signs out there. Mark off where product's supposed to go so pallets aren't laying in the way for people to trip over and cause safety hazards. Um, identify what should be there. If it's missing, um, why is it missing or what's missing? Uh, this is a product to be put away section. Uh, so receiving will drop off material for this uh, regulator value stream. They can get uh, about two pallets in there. If there's two pallets, basically the area is full, the material handler needs to start putting it away. It's a good visual cue. Um, they still have a little bit of time to put the material away. Um, with this one before another pallet shows up. So we talk a lot about production. I know not everybody in here is from production. This is our customer care um, daily management board. Um, from their daily 5S checklist, their month month to date daily queue calls. Um, we track how long it takes to answer the phone. Um, how many calls are received throughout the day um, and throughout the month. Um, and they track green or red uh, for those metrics as well. Uh, feedback tickets, uh, you can go onto our website, zern.com, and uh, comment on how well or how poorly we perform. We track how many we get in, how quickly they're resolved, uh, if they're resolved within 24 hours or not. Uh, order counts, lots of, lots of di different information that 
pertains to that that area or that cell. Um, so again, it's whatever is important for your area. This is uh, from our finance department. Um, this is a daily, one of their daily boards, or I mean weekly boards. So each day there's these different tasks that need to happen. Put up a little green magnet if they met that goal, a red magnet if they missed it, um, and track how they're doing throughout the week. So, so Ryan, is that like freaking the finance people out? I've never seen anything that simple come out of the finance group. You know, certainly not at Cal Poly. You know. They couldn't do that. They'd have to hire somebody to come. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, no, it's great. I mean, when different groups go through the the, the visual daily management training, and they see different examples from other sites. It's just like, oh, I can really use that. And you know, you can. Buy a board if cost is an issue. You know, throw up that butcher paper. Use a bunch of post-its. You don't have to get the uh, pre-printed for your company post-its. So you can go down and uh, to Staples and, and get some cheap ones. Write whatever information it is. But I mean, it's it's super simple and, and easy to follow. It's you know, make sure that the jobs are getting done. If they're falling behind, what do you need to do to to get back on track? Um, Training matrix, we didn't talk about it on the floor a lot, um, but uh, the evolution of this is identifying your associates um, and what functions need to be performed and who's trained to do them, who's not trained. Um, it's a great uh, associate engagement process so that they can see what option or what's, uh, what other tasks are out there for them to learn if they want to get engaged and learn more. Um, Keeps it visual. If it leads out, the backup lead needs to, to run the area. Uh, or quality is out there. We're having quality problems. The new uh, thing that we're moving to is a picture of each associate on the on the floor in that cell, and then the, uh, the little magnet as to what function they're they're trained to do. So if they're having a problem in one area, and they look and say, "Well, wait, that person's not trained to be there," um, it's a it's easy to spot um, what could be going on. This is kind of all the different uh, badges they can earn. Small badge if they're trained, if they can perform the job. A larger badge if they can actually train people to do the, do the job. So real quick, uh, challenges that we come across too much data, um, showing you a lot of uh, boards that we have out there. Um, some of them are really hard to maintain. Um, you know, just start simple, figure out, you'll figure out when you get too much data that you're trying to track, uh, when it becomes too hard to manage. Uh, you run into wall space challenges as you track too much data. Um, you know, figure out how to simplify just as you would a manufacturing process. Try to shrink that data down to what's really needed. Um, use the kiosk if necessary. Uh, following through with misses and at the abnormalities. So you know, going back to why we do the visual daily management, whether it's um, identifying stuff on the floor or um, your inbox, if the papers are overflowing, um, falling out of your inbox, that's a, a key or a cue that um, have a problem. So what do you do with those abnormalities, making sure that whoever's recording that information is not just wasting their time, uh, interact with them, make sure you're following through with all that info. Uh, Frontline ownership, it shouldn't be you know the supervisor that's filling it all in. Um, really strive to have the front line update the information, own the countermeasures as well. Um, it's going to take time to train them to understand how to fix the problems but make sure that they have the tools and the resources to fix the processes. Um, and then also a challenge of making it too complex. You know, can't stress enough to keep it simple to start off with as you continue to grow and uh, um, uh, improve upon the, the systems. You know, if someone leaves that's been doing all the charts and keeping all the data up, is it going to be able to be maintained with somebody else in place as they move? either to another company or another role within the same organization. You want to make sure that it's easy to maintain and uh, carry on to the next level. Um, 
Is your frontline your associates or is that a different group? Yeah, yeah, frontline associates. And how much do they use the information that's on these boards? Um, not as much as they should. Um, there's definitely in small backflow where they made some uh, some recent changes and to the display of the information. It's really clear, red or green. Um, they know what the goals are. We've seen, we saw a lot of um, improvement in regulators. We started tracking the information. They're updating it. They're uh, following through and making sure that they're, um, if there is a problem, you know, what's the problem, they can get engaged with ideas on how to, to change the cell. There's some, I don't know if I got it in here, but we have, you know, uh, what is it called? The wins, oh, yeah. quick win summaries. Quick win summaries. So before and after, you know, we kept having an issue with um, how we grease some O rings. Associate came up with a new idea of how to how to do it, um, but they're they're getting engaged. They're coming up with those ideas um, based on you know missing missing those those metrics. So. Um, about it. That was some uh, some other stuff I'm going to bore you with. But um, any questions or other round robin discussions, you guys? Well, let's, well, let's, well, let's, well, let's start off with by giving. <laughs> so, you know, one thing is, you know, there's a lot of information here. I, I, you know, you're free to take it back with you to your organizations and try to apply it and even make it better.